Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First United Methodist Church as we gather together, uh, not just for another Sunday, but also for World Communion Sunday. And so as we celebrate uh, communion every month, we are doing it today as United Methodist Churches literally around the world. And so it is an honor and a joy to do that with you side by side. Those who are here in person and those who are joining with us online know that everyone is part of this open table. As you saw that uh, video about how to assemble flood buckets, hopefully you're seeing around the campus um, that we are collecting collecting flood buckets. Now, I will say we were originally intending to collect those uh, to mainly go out to the Tampa and St. Pete area. That might still be the case, but as you know, uh, we are watching uh, this potential storm, uh, Milton, coming in and what is going to be happening. So depending on what happens, those flood buckets may actually stay here, or at least some of them, so that we can respond to those who are in need here in our community. So uh, just pay attention to our communications uh, through email and uh, Facebook and, and all those sorts of things about uh, the church uh, closing, uh, the campus closing, and then what will happen uh, when we reopen. And of course, first and foremost, we hope that you all stay safe. Those who are here and those who are joining with us, uh, our prayers are that uh, you are able to be okay. And then as the storm passes, we start to reach out, make sure that our loved ones, family, friends, and neighbors are cared for. And then how do we start caring for the wider community? So we will certainly keep watch of how this storm is coming in and when, and then let you know uh, what things things are happening around. One thing that we did want to share, and we still want to, is that uh, Forrest White, who's our Director of Missions, and uh, Susan Earhart, who is one of our members and also uh, part of the Gulf Central District Disaster Response, uh, are planning to form a, a team to go out to Allendale uh, UMC on Saturday. Now, depending on what happens, that may still be the case, or that serve team may stay here in the community. So either way, if you're feeling a call and, and want an opportunity uh, to help those who have been impacted in this hurricane season, certainly let us know or Forrest White know. And then as we get closer to Saturday, we will certainly let you know if that team continues to go out of town or if maybe we stay here. So all of that is to say, just keep watch and we will continue to share with you as much communication as possible. Uh, we do hope that you are able to see the flood buckets that are around. Those have lists of the items as well as the items themselves. So you can kind of see some of those examples. They're about 50 to $75, give or take. And so if you're not able to form a full flood bucket, just indicate Indicate on your list the items that you did bring, and uh, we'll try to make up the difference. Also, if you just want to get spare items, that's okay too. Uh, we will continue to fill them in. And as always, you can donate to the Florida Disaster Response at our website or the conference's website. Also, um, our tradition is uh, sometimes when we come to receive communion, we may lay something aside for our fellowship fund, which goes out to folks, um, or to storm, uh, to storm response. So if you would like to give a little offering when you come forward for communion, our ushers, as always, will be standing by ready to collect that. Um, and certainly, if it's a written offering or if you go online, just indicate that you want it to go to storm recovery, and we will make sure that it goes in that direction. And so it is very very timely that we do remember our United Methodist churches around the world as we are encountering either physical storms or just the storms of life. How is God continuing to be in our midst? And so especially as we continue this Wesleyan rooted series, and as we look at serve impactfully, Pastor Kim has a very impactful message for us. What does it mean to, as Jesus say, see those who are hungry, to clothe those, clothe those who are naked, to visit those who are in need? How do we see them and how do we respond to them? And so as we come together, we do acknowledge that sometimes um, we are not always seeing with the eyes of Jesus. Perhaps there is something in our way. Perhaps it is our own fear or anxiety. Sometimes we just do not know what to do. Um, sometimes we can forget things like I forgot the liturgy that leads us into the invitation for, uh, for our confession. So I'll just try to wing it as best I can. But the, your response, you see, you get it easy. Your response gets it on screen. I, I don't get that. Um, so as we do open ourselves to this time of worship, we do first acknowledge those times in which maybe we go in different directions. And yet, as we come together as God's people, we realize that we are welcomed back. And so I invite us just to open this time of worship with an invitation for this confession. And so Christ comes, Christ invites all of us to come to the table who have not loved him, who have uh, fallen short, who have turned over that way. And so in that confession, we share this with one another. Merciful God, 
we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and this proves God's love toward us. And so, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And welcome to worship.
us, Lord, you're the light in the darkness. You're the hope in troubled times. You're a peace that surpasses all understanding. All our lives you've been faithful, whether we're aware of it or not. God, help us to become more aware of your presence in this place, in this time, at this table, with these brothers and sisters, and all your children.
It may seem like a small thing, but it is a powerful experience to be able to pass the peace to one another, uh, just in the fellowship, which is also very Wesleyan, and also just knowing that we're seeing the face of Jesus and that Jesus is looking back at us and all those who we encounter. So especially as Pastor Kim will share with us that great gospel story of Jesus talking about when it is that we see others, we see the face of Christ. And so we come together as God's people, seeing the ways that we can serve and to see one another. And so as we go into this time of prayer, we may acknowledge those things that sometimes cloud our sight or our spirit, but we also lift up the joys and the celebrations of what it means to be amongst our neighbors. Whatever prayers we have together, know that God hears us and God responds to us. Let us pray together. So gracious God, as I look amongst this congregation, I see so many of your servants and are humbled and thankful. Those on our stage, our altar, who are sharing with us the, the energy and the inspiration of worship through song and through word. I see those both on stage, in the congregation, those who are with us online, who were out in the rain last week putting together our beautiful pumpkin patch. And for this, we are thankful. The ways that it impacts the community, the ways that our people come together to make that possible. I see those who are out in the community out in our district, out in our conference, sharing your love, walking in the mud, hearing the cries, sharing stories. For all of this, we give you thanks. And so in whatever storm may approach us, O God, whether it is physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, whatever it may be, in the midst of that, O God, may we hear your voice, may we know your presence, may we see you in one another, so that we may continue to know we are loved and to love each other. And we pray all of this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who brings us together in spirit and now in voice as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so as our ushers come forward for this time of offering, if you feel called and led to be a part of disaster response or support, just indicate that in your giving, whether it's physical or if you go online to our website, firstumc.org forward slash give, uh, we will make sure that that goes to the Florida disaster response. Again, if you wish to give an offering when you come forward for communion, however it is you are able to give, whether it's for financial gifts or being the hands and feet, know that we appreciate so much the generosity you continue to share with others.
they amazing? Yes. Yes. We are in the Wesleyan Rooted series, and I get to bring home this uh, Serve Impactfully theme uh, this morning. But let's start with a reading from Matthew 25, verses 34 to 40. Verse 34, Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, that you are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the foundation of the world. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that you saw, that we saw you hungry? When was it? And you gave us food and, and thirsty and gave you something to drink. And when was it that you saw a stranger and we welcomed you? You were naked and we gave you clothing. And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and we visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of these least of these brothers and sisters of mine. You did it for me. Folks, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So a pastor once wrote, my goal in life is to inspire people so much that they are ready to charge hell with a water hose. <laughs> Can you just see us all doing that? I don't know. Serving impactfully, is that what that means? I, I, I don't know, honestly. But when I look at this gospel of Matthew, it seems rather simple, doesn't it? But yet we live in this world where we are expected to climb the corporate ladder, but yet Jesus comes along and teaches us something about this downward mobility, something completely opposite. So this morning, I want to just spend a little time with you and, and share a few stories with you about other people. And one of the stories is, came right before this in Scripture. It's where Jesus tells this story, this parable, where this leader, this person that's an owner of a business, leaves us for an extended period of time, even when there's hurricanes. <laughs> I was thinking about Charlie as I, as I read that. <laughs> God bless you, Charlie. <laughs> but in this story, the gentleman gives a bag of silver, five bags actually, to one. He gives five bags of silver, and, and that person goes out and invests five more bags and, and gets five more bags. He doubles the money that he made. And then he gives another person two bags, and then they go out and work and get two more bags. He's doubled whatever it was that he was supposed to make. And then, of course, the one that gives one little bag, and he goes out and he digs a hole and he buries it for safekeeping. I don't know, I think about which one of those individuals would be me. And the business owner basically divided all of this based on the level of which the person could handle. The ability that they had to go out into the world and, and duplicate what it is that they've been given. I wonder, do you know whether or not you have specific abilities gifts that you have been given that you can turn around and give to others, do you know that you do? Yes? Come on. Yes. Yes, you do. You know that. You've got something to give, right? Something. But we have this choice. We have this choice to make. Do we, do we just hide it? Do we hide what we've got because it's easier? Do we hide it because somehow showing others our abilities would somehow make us act like a superhero or something? But each person has received some gift to give. Some gift, but we have the choice to use it or not. Maybe we don't use it because 
well, maybe we're afraid. Or maybe just the idea of getting up in front of a group of people and speaking causes anxiety. Whatever the case may be, we hold back when sometimes the thing that we need to do more than anything else is show the world what we've got to offer. God expects us to invest in whatever God has given us. And sometimes it takes us improving a little bit. I didn't just get up and learn how to talk about the Bible without actually studying it. Spent four years in seminary studying scripture. I love the fact that part of the responsibility that I have in this church is to sit and read the Bible. I get paid to do that. Isn't that awesome? That's amazing. And yes, and clean up pumpkins after a storm comes. That comes too. Someone's got to do it. You ask him, you're right. But according to this scripture from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, Jesus told us, Be found before the foundation of this entire world, God's prepared a place for us, this kingdom, where we can go out and have kingdom impact by serving others. And it's by verse 40, when we look at it, it says we learn that in order to serve others, we have to recognize the fact that we're also serving God. So if we serve others, we're serving God. And that's how we get kingdom impact. I remember going to Italy a number of years ago. I was really excited about it. And it was so funny watching uh, Bishop Carter, who's a very tall man, go into this little cave where St. Francis of Assisi would go and, and rest. And the the stone there was so smooth from where so many hours were spent just there. Francis, who was born in 1226, he was an Italian mystic, poet, Catholic friar. He established the Franciscans, that order of... He came from a very wealthy family. His father was a merchant, a cloth merchant. He had it made. He didn't have to do anything. He was inheriting his father's business if he wanted it. But God put something else on his heart. And he became a beggar. And he became an itinerant pastor. And Francis had this deeper understanding of God. And I love that what he did was he, he went out into this nature and he, and he saw outside the buildings of these churches and that God was there. And the more he explored nature, the deeper his heart began to encounter the mystery of God. And the more he found God outside, he also began to feel God and know that God dwelt inside of him. And I think that was the big change for me personally, was that when I realized it's not about going out and just doing, but also realizing that God is within me and can help me do whatever it is because nothing's impossible without God, with God, right? With God in our lives, we can do anything. And see, the more his heart was set on God's passionate love, the more he went out and he saw love of God, the more he heard from people's voices, God, the more his mind was set on God, he became more loving and knowing. Francis knew and he understood what it meant to love actively. Perhaps you've heard this prayer of St. Francis. I remember I went to a Franciscan center over in Tampa and uh, got to spend about three days Uh, I got there thinking it was a silent retreat that would begin like maybe in the evening and then by morning I would be allowed to talk. There's nothing, (laughs) no, that's not how it worked. I got there and they're like, okay, have dinner and then after dinner you're not going to speak until Sunday, this is Friday night, to Sunday morning. I was like, oh no. (laughs) But I did it, I made it. And then they told me, you can't even look at people. Like, don't even look at them because you might interfere with their spiritual journey. So you had to, like, walk around with your head down. (laughs) Until one day, Corey Jones was sitting across from me, and I just took off my glasses, and I looked at him, and I went, (laughs) I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. It was too much for me. 
But I picked up this little card that was there. It's got a picture of, of what looks to be like a St. Francis, a monk of some kind, a friar. And on the back, it has this peace prayer. <laughs> Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. I thought, wow, I could do that. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we pardon, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. We die to self, to the self-serving aspects of our life to serve others. Now, this prayer was actually put on these little cards with the picture of St. Francis on one side and the prayer on the other back in 1912. So, of course, this is 700 years later than when St. Francis lived. So he didn't really actually write it. But I think when you look at his writings and you, you see what he wrote and, and the things that he he'd lived and the way he lived, I think we can attribute it in some way to him. But these cards were distributed back in World War I to give hope and peace to those in the midst of chaos and war. And then it became popular in a song, and many of you may know how to sing that. But Francis's legacy was one in which God's love was coming into him so that he could go out and love on others. That's kingdom impact. That's what it means to serve impactfully. Now, some of us may try to figure out like what our gifts are, and there's all these wonderful assessments. You can go on our website and type in spiritual gifts. And I took a spiritual gift class here at the church, and, and I found out that one of my top five is faith. And I thought to myself, now, I don't have the kind of faith like, you know, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. <laughs> No way am I going in there without a fire hose into that fiery furnace. <laughs> I don't know if I have that kind of faith, but I had the kind of faith that said, when God called me and said, Kim, I want you to consider ministry as a path, a journey for you. And I've told this story before. I was like, no. <laughs> then God brought me right back home to where I started years ago, right back here to this very place where I felt God's calling me and tugging on my heart. And I hope maybe today someone in this room, God is going to tug on your heart and say, I want you to do something more. You know, in the story of Genesis, we've got this God placing the humanity into the, the garden, tend it, tend to this beautiful garden, it's all yours I think in our DNA, caring became a part of it. That spirit of caring comes from God's heart. It's what gives us the desire to care for others. Certainly after I was given my first church appointment, I started thinking about, okay, now others, right? God, others. That you're just talking about the people who are members in my church, right? That's all I've got to take care of. And God was like, no, no, you're a Christian. Others means, yes, yourself, take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of the people in your church. But as a Christian, it also means you're responsible for sharing the gospel with as many people as you possibly can who do not know who Jesus Christ is. And we live in a world today where more than 50% of the people we are surrounded by, they don't know Jesus like we know Jesus. You're responsible for those in your church, yes, but you're responsible for those outside your church, too. Anyone who's in need, whatever that looks like. And I thought, wow, God, that's a whole lot of responsibility. That's a whole lot of others. It sounds like you want me to be like Jesus. Yes. That's exactly what God is calling every single person who wants to follow Jesus to be, like Jesus. But I'm hoping that all I really have to do is inspire some of you to then go into the world and inspire others who will go into the world 
And then all will know who Jesus is from our little bit of effort. I think of this tiny little woman from Albania. We know her as Mother Teresa, Teresa of Calcutta. She's an example. I think she's one of the more modern-day examples that we can actually probably identify with in some respects. She understood what this downward mobility meant, this downward spiral of, of being a servant instead of being served, what it meant to jump from one social class to another. So I'm going to ask you, how far, how wide, how open-armed are you to go out and serve others? Her work inspired millions. One little tiny lady inspired millions to go out and give of their time, their talents, their gifts, their service, their witness. So Wesleyan rooted, isn't it? Teresa's life with the poor and the sick inspired thousands of people, and they were given shelter. Thousands more were cared for, children that went into foster care, mobile dispensaries and clinics, helped over 2 million people, even 50,000 lepers. Teresa's ministry and missionaries of charity, they operated schools and they operated shelters in over 120 countries, sounds Wesleyan rooted. (laughs) The Methodist church is the same. Teresa's followers, they serve the elderly, the homeless, anyone in need. That tiny little lady from Albania followed Jesus Christ and founded a legacy of servant leadership. And servant leaders learn to listen and then respond hear the needs, the cries of those around them, and respond. And before anyone can even undertake such a massive amount of responsibility, we have to look deep within and realize that we have to have faith. We have to believe. We have to trust. We must learn to follow before we can lead. Hebrews eleven six tells us it's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to God must believe that God exists, for God rewards those who sincerely seek God. So can we serve impactfully without faith? I don't think so. Faith in God results in spiritual growth. We grow. The more our faith grows, the more we grow, and the more we grow, the more we extend that love of God to others. Yeah, I think if you were to look at the Bible and you go through it and you look at all the different characters that are in the Bible, lots of characters, you begin to see that biblical characters chose to obey God's commands to serve because they had faith. From the very beginning, that point in which God promised safety to Noah and Noah's family, God saved Noah's family. At that point in which Abraham and Sarah, they just wanted a family, but God said, no, I'm not going to just give you a family. I'm going to give you a nation. And then God promised this young boy with a slingshot who took care of sheep and shep- as a shepherd and a young maiden named Mary and her betrothed Joseph. And God promised them a kingdom lineage. And that's when God saved us. God saves. And so can we. Every biblical hall of famer had their faults. They had their fears too. They had their doubts. But then they also had this consistent gift that each one of them developed over time, and that was the gift of faith and the gift of love. And they believed that God was who God said God was, and God was going to do what God said God was going to do. So going back to that little story I said in the beginning about a pastor wanting to inspire the congregation. You know, we can't charge hell with a water gun unless we've got faith and we understand God's love and we believe and we trust in God. Love and faith are the right tools to get the job done 
with servant impactfulness. Let us pray. Communal God, thank you for the diversity of your creation and the unity of your church. As we gather around Christ's table, the one that's set before us, we remember it is as wide and as long as your love for us. Fill our hearts with compassion and move us to be in full accord with one another. Make our joy complete so that it flows into the world. And thank you for leaders whom we support today through our World Communion Sunday offerings. Bless them with the same mind and love and accord that you desire for all your creation. Equip them to restore your joy as they live into their potential and possibility. And as we come around this table, we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion and we strengthen our sense of unity and bind ourselves in the sacrificial love that we pray for in the name of Jesus. This is what unites us, a table. Think of how many times you are united around friends and family around a table. It deepens our faith in one another. It deepens our faith in God. And Jesus came and he took bread and he gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, all of you. This is my body that's been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he lifted a cup. Again, he gave thanks and he gave praise and he gave it to and passed it around the table to his friends and said, take, drink, all of you. This is, this is my blood, but it's a new covenant, one that's been given for you. You're forgiven for anything that's been holding you back, keeping you imprisoned. Do all this in remembrance of me. So as we come together on World Communion Sunday, as our ushers come forward are going to help, let us just remind ourselves of this gift, this beautiful gift that we've been given with one another. Amen.
this morning with your hearts full and awake that you feel the presence of God's spirit that has just come into this place 
that through the communion that you shared with each other, that you know that we are united, not just as Methodists, Wesley rooted, but that we are united around the world, around the globe, because today's World Communion Sunday, people all over the world are doing what we are doing this morning. And that's what unites us. And none of that would be possible if we didn't go out and serve impactfully in the world. So this is the legacy that we've been given. So go into the world today and serve impactfully. In the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.